Now let's talk quickly about a native API. The native API is the original API uh, created for the free RTOS. One remark, uh, in the configuration, you can hide the native API if you want to use only the CMSYS RTOS API. So the one compatible across different RTOSs. Uh, the native API still is underneath the CMSYS RTOS implementation. So I recommend to keep the access here and uh, time to time, because uh, CMSYS RTOS uh, uh, standardizes the way how the RTOSs uh, are used, it can miss some specific functionalities that are still available in the native API. So if you want, uh, you can use it. You can still include it in your application. The native API has got some conventions, like uh, for variable names, it has got a prefix that uh, shows what type of the variable it is. So whether its type is uh, character, short, long, pointer, unsigned, uh, specific return type. When we speak about functions, hey, again, it has got a prefix uh, telling what uh, return value it gives. So whether it doesn't give anything or a port base type, uh, specific type or return value and whether the function is private or public. So this way you can very easily recognize what the function returns, what parameters it takes. Further, uh, it gives you a macros. Uh, these macros uh, uh, are uh, constructed so that the first part of the macro uh, defines the file where such macro is defined. So you can see that, for example, if it uh, begins with a PD, it is defined in the project definitions. So you can very easily look for a specific uh, set of uh, values that are uh, tied to this uh, specific type. There are as well uh, macro definitions for uh, common return values and parameters like uh, true, false, pass, fail. So, you, so that you can test the functions for return values. On top of the native API, the FreeRTOS defines the CMSYS OS API. You know what the CMSYS uh, OS API means? The CMSYS is a standard defined by ARM with the big help of ST, uh, where uh, ARM standardized the Cortex-M functionality, the macros and functions that help you to control any microcontroller based on the Cortex-M cores. So uh, the API was adapted by a lot of uh, vendors, like our competitors, and uh, there is uh, uh, I think more than 200 companies now implemented, implementing different Cortex M microcontrollers. So a lot of them use the CMSYS as an interchangeable code. ARM uh, realized that uh, because there are a lot of uh, ports of different uh, real-time operating systems running on top of Cortex M, they decided to standardize uh, the API for the real-time operating systems as well. So they created uh, their own API that takes the common functions from these uh, real-time operating systems and uh, offered the API. First, it was implemented on top of the RTX, which uh, is an in-house operating system created by Kyle, belonging to ARM now. Then it was implemented on the FreeRTOS, and it became a de facto standard for uh, Cortex M based devices. It's as well very nice and easy to use. So it's a generic uh, interface for Cortex M based uh, processors. It uses as well some middleware components, but uh, these are independent from RTOSs 
and it allows uh, easy transfer from one RTOS vendor to the other. It uh, as well defines a minimum set of functionality like uh, management of the tasks, control of the kernel, uh, semaphore, queue and mail management and uh, the definition of the memory allocation and the allocation. When we work with the Cubemix and uh, our software stacks, we use this uh, CMC's RTOS API by default so that uh, if uh, in future we decide to move to another RTOS, we can do it very easily. Now we can see uh, the implementation uh, in the CMC's OS.C file and where to find it. And uh, you can see the examples of uh, the differences between the native API of the FreeRTOS and the CMC's RTOS uh, counterpart. One big advantage of the CMC's RTOS is that it's uh, more readable. So you can see kernel start underneath the task start scheduler with a void return parameter. Thread create, X task define, X task create, OS semaphore create, here you can choose X semaphore create binary or counting, and so on and so on. So the CMC's RTOS always begins with the OS and then the description of the function which is, uh, I would say, very nicely readable. The CMC's RTOS uh, uh, still uses underneath the original operating system. So it's a wrap-up layer, uh, which means if you call the OS function, it will take all the parameters, it will make uh, some security checks, for example, and uh, then it will call the original function. So yes, a couple of clock cycles on top. On the other side, uh, from programmer's point of view, it has a very good benefit uh, because it standardizes functions. For example, the uh, OS, uh, uh, for example, message put, when you uh, put some data into the, into the queue of messages for a given task, uh, if you operate in a standard uh, intertask communication, you can call OS message put uh, like it is, and you would as well call the same thing uh, in the native API. But if you call this function from an interrupt, the situation changes. The CMC's RTOS will again use the OS message put function, so there is no change and you don't care whether you are in interrupt or in a standard task. But uh, for the native RTOS API, you would need uh, to call uh, something like uh, X message transmit or send from ISR. While uh, the OS message put uh, will look into the context of the processor and it will decide whether it's in the interrupt or in the task and it will choose the appropriate native function. So it makes your life easier, even if it costs you a little bit of uh, clock cycles more. Most of the CMC's OS functions return the OS status value that uh, you can check uh, for uh, OK, timeout, message received. Uh, so it's a different combination of return values and flags that can be tested. And uh, it gives you a quite a big control of uh, what the system is doing. For example, if you don't implement a memory overflow hook, when you uh, request a new heap memory, new chunk of memory, uh, the function will return a null pointer and it will as well give you the return status that it failed. So if you test for the return status, you know that uh, you should not proceed with your function because there is no memory allocated. Uh, that's uh, where the OS status uh, can be helpful. Additionally, each object that you create has got its own ID. And uh, you can see the ID defined uh, depending on the object used. So 
you can as well see that it's uh, mapped to the original handle of the native RTOS and uh, I would say that uh, it's effectively just a typecasted type. So it's very easy if you take uh, the OS semaphore ID and you simply pass it to the native function after typecasting. The delays in your application are given in milliseconds and uh, uh, they have some special meanings or special values have special meanings. So null zero means there is no delay. If you, for example, wait for a mutex, you define in a function how much time you want to spend waiting for the mutex. If you put zero, you only test if the mutex is available now and the function immediately returns with the information mutex is there or not. So you don't wait for it. Anything bigger than zero is a delay in milliseconds and it's used for waiting for a specific time. However, there exists a special value called uh, wait forever, OS wait forever, that's defined as uh, minus one in 32 bits and uh, it defines infinite time. So if you don't want to uh, define a timeout, but uh, you still need to wait for something forever, this is the right macro or value to put into a function and the task will get blocked without the timing mechanism. Now let's look at the OS status values. You can see that uh, when everything goes well, it returns OS OK with a value zero. So here it's not that if the function returns a positive value, it's fine. Here you have to test if the return parameter equals equals OS OK. Or we have got uh, another things like if uh, you wait for a signal, you should check if the function returns the OS event signal or message or mail. But if it times out, it will give you an OS event timeout. So typically you have to test what is the return value of a specific function and decide whether the result is positive. So you got some message or uh, whether you got a timeout. If uh, we have got some errors, there are different things uh, uh, like uh, additional errors defined. And you can see them listed here. So even errors have uh, their own values. And you can see that if you uh, test for the bit seven, you typically uh, are able to recognize that the error came.